Well, you're not alone. Entrepreneur.com reports that 32% of all homeowners have one or more projects in their house that have been left uncomplete for over a year. Isn't that a little bit ridiculous? Quarantine has forced us all to become reacquainted with our homes, whether we like it or not. And being at home has made it clear that there's a rising need for organization. Having a more purposeful space is no longer something just for celebrities or the extremely wealthy. Hi, I'm Eliana Sarver, the founder and CEO of Design Space. I have always had a passion for creativity, organization, and functionality. That's why I created an app that allows anyone to tailor their house to their exact needs. At Design Space, we believe that living a more purposeful life starts with surrounding yourself in more intentional spaces. So let's take a look at how our app works. When entering into our app, you'll be able to select from our two different versions. Within our free version, you'll take a short quiz to identify your design needs. You'll be prompted with questions such as select your favorite color palette, designs, or room inspiration until the algorithm finds your own personal style. Clients will then be able to browse through a curated feed, much like Pinterest, showing you images that you would like based on your own answers. If you were to design a baby nursery for um, suggestion, you might look at wallpaper, a new crib, changing table, or a nice rug. Allowing you to save your favorite ideas and organize them into different boards. Purchasing products easily within our app through quick links. And all you get to do is set up the product and enjoy your new space. We hope to generate income based off of our free version through short ads playing every 15 to 30 minutes. Our free version will allow people to get a taste of what premium has to offer. Our premium version starts out the same way by having the clients take a short quiz. From there, you'll be matched with a designer that fits your style needs. It's honestly like Tinder, but for interior design. One benefit of our premium version is allowing you to connect with local contractors and handymen, as well as work alongside your design space professional to create your dream space. At Design Space, you're only being charged for the time that the designer spends with you planning and designing your room. Using the app, you'll be able to enter in your own room dimensions, scanning in pictures and videos, saving you both time and money. From there, professionals will curate a shopping list for you, easily linked within our app. Finally, they'll give you a detailed instruction on how to bring your desired space into fruition. All you have left to do is install your products and enjoy. Design Space has three main competitors. Traditional interior design firms are not easily accessible, especially to individuals living in rural areas. They come along with expensive designer fees and minimum budgets. Our indirect competition, DIY project and furniture store employees, also come along with their downfalls. Without a distinct budget, it's easily to um, allocate costs incorrectly as well as go over budget. With a lack of structure and timeliness, jobs often go undone, as I related to before. Furniture store employees fall short in customization. As you can see, based off this graph, furniture store employee suggestions and online DIY resources have a low quality and a low price. Interior design firms have a high price and a high quality, um, but Design Space offers a better solution, giving you the highest quality with the lowest price. We are able to do this based on our revenue model. As you can see, our based off of our competition's revenue model, we are the obvious choice. We are able to give the same product for less than half the cost in designer fees while completing our projects in a fraction of the time. We also pride ourselves on being able to give our designers a livable wage of $30 an hour when our competition does not. It's just a carrot. Our target market will be clients to 80% women ages 25 to 65, making over $100,000 annually living in the United States. Anythingresearch.com reports that the interior design industry is currently worth over, one point, over $121 billion as of 2020 and is only expected to grow from there. Within this market, interior design space fills a niche for individuals who are already interested in interior design but desire a more affordable, accessible, and customized platform. Our marketing strategy for our current clients will be email subscription-based, giving them discounts, updates, and high-quality service. We will create partnerships with local and widespread online-based 
furniture stores, such as Wayfair and Overstock.com. We will self-promote through uh, leveraging our own social media platforms, as well as pay for paid promotion within apps such as Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Here's a quick look at our financials. Startup costs will cost around $85,000. Reoccurring costs in our first quarter will be $13,000 and our reoccurring variable cost will be designer wages at $30 an hour. We hope to aim at our revenue in our first quarter of over $33,000. Here's a quick financial overview of our expectations for the next five years. In summary, we require $85,000 to start up. We estimate a gross revenue of $2.4 million and a net profit of $1.4 million after five years, with an astounding 5.7 million interactions with our clients on our app, based on our ads. Are you ready to become a part of the future of interior design? At Design Space, we will revolutionize the field of interior design by making it more affordable, accessible, and without sacrificing any of the customization like our competitors. Sharp, today I want to ask you for a proposal of 20% ownership within my business in exchange for $100,000. $100,000 will allow, allow me to cover the startup costs as well as our first quarter's expenses, allowing my dreams for the future interior design to turn into a reality. Thank you. But I think the first question, very, very important question, probably the most, which version of Real Housewives is your favorite? Um, that's a tough one. I think probably Beverly Hills or New York. Fair enough. So I do have a question, though, about these contractors. How do you expect to attract the top contractor talent um, and retain them? In your revenue model, it seems a little difficult with, with paying them above market rate. Uh, while also charging less than what the, con the outside contractors are charging? Yeah, so we aim to pay our interior designers $30 an hour, and we're able to do this because we don't have a firm facility, so we're not paying costs to uphold a physical facility, and we assume that we'll be able to um, attract designers to come work for our firm because we offer them better wages flexible time working with customers, um, as well as being a part of the innovation of interior design. Okay, that, that makes sense. So, so the, the lower fixed cost you have allows you to pay your designers and hopefully attract some of that higher end talent in the, in the interior design market. Yes, definitely. I have a question. Um, uh, your target market is people that frankly have been procrastinators, it sounds like, and yes. getting their design done. And when you talk about the contractors, what about the physical contractors? I understand the design contractors, but what about the people who are actually installing? Um, do you see yourself participating in that, or are the people on their own to basically take this roadmap and move ahead? Yeah, so that's a great question. So with our free version, you're kind of left to your own devices. You can gain inspiration based on the feed that we give you as well as purchase items on your own. But with our premium version, we not only give you a designer that you get to meet with, but also refer you to local contractors for more intense projects as well as handymen. So you can hire them out within our app, but we aren't directly affiliated with them. So if you needed that extra push, like let's say wallpaper is too difficult to put up, for instance, you can hire out a contractor within our app to do that process for you, and you can do the rest of the designing for yourself. So then you would have some kind of strategy to make sure that you have good contractors and a rating system, I would assume? Yes, definitely. Okay. And then the, the second part that I wanted to ask you is, again, these people are procrastinators. How do you estimate, like, you know, I saw that the estimation went for the time of a job was approximately $1,000. What if you have someone who keeps procrastinating and is not finishing again? Because ultimately you want them to be satisfied with the process. How, how do you help them along with that? Definitely. So I think for that question, the, um, the designers would kind of have the ball in their court to get their side of the process done for their client because 
um, the way that I base their wages is they would get uh, around 75% of their earnings up front and then the 25 rest of their earnings after they close out the project. So it incentivizes them to finish the project quicker along with their client. But if the client isn't uh, being responsive to the designer, then that's a totally separate issue. Yeah, I, I, I would suggest possibly boxing in a little bit of how many hours they get. Yeah. Um, just because it, it makes the customer responsible. Like I used to work in construction. Um, <laughs> finance and one thing is you know boxing that in a little bit and saying okay you get 10 hours or whichever it may be so both sides are accountable yes. and one thing that I loved 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 is I saw a checklist once and it's something that you might want to think about putting on your site is you know we will do this if you do this just because you're creating a very positive environment and ultimately you want people to come back to the site and say I got it done you don't want a, a whole bunch of procrastinators who never finish the project even after they go through. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, definitely. Great job. Thank you. I wanted to ask a little bit more about the app. So how are you interacting with people? Does it start on the app, and then if they want more details, they can have a first touch call with a designer? Because the thing I know about this, um, we're constantly designing and building buildings and doing repairing things. It's a high touch people. A lot of people have the inability to have these thoughts on their own. So your interaction with the client, because you got to realize most people, this isn't their world. They don't think this way. They are uh, finance people. They have a hard time thinking creatively and how a space should look. So how do you make that bridge? Because it all comes back to comfort that the ideas and things that you're sharing with them are the way they should be thinking. And that ease of use and the interaction is everything. Definitely. So we would set up a process where if you wanted your interactions to be purely online only, you would be able to zoom in with your designer and constantly touch base, figuring out where you are in the project, as well as you'll be in charge of updating the app with your room dimensions and pictures and videos. So there's constant communication through both parties. But let's say you need an extra push and you want um, a contractor or a handyman or even a designer to be alongside with you throughout this process, then we would allow them to meet up in person as well. Another thought, and you hit on this, and it's so true, um, most projects starting to get finished. Uh, one of the things I think about is the ad you hear on the radio all the time, I got junk, people are trying to get, you need an angle, and I don't know if design space gets that through, uh, complete a project or something they it visualize for a person, because you're right, a lot of people have started something at their house and they just live with it. And a lot of times what's sad is maybe just another eight hours is all it needs. They just don't have that ability to see it through. So somehow to capitalize on that would be an amazing marketing concept because you're right, the, the, we've all been to a person's house like, well, so what's up with this wall right here? <laughs> and you're like, well, we started that a year ago. And yeah. We got back to it. And I kind of, I, I love where you're going with that. It's almost like a financial incentive. Um, the best way I can say it is if it costs you $5,000 to do a room, you know, maybe as they you know progress through this, they're getting a financial incentive from these savings. You know, what's the incentive? Really thinking that through because how great would it be to say, not only did you get this project done, you even saved the designer fees because you got so many discounts at vendors or whichever it may be, but what's that incentive? What's, right. what's that tag? And if you could somehow capitalize, so right now the marketplace for uh, labor or people with the trades, it's very, very difficult to get them to come to any house. The reason why it's a one-off thing, so you have to build a concept here that they're gonna get repeat business. And then another thought is you could almost make this like an Uber thing. And my point is, there are people that have the ability to do different projects, they just don't do it for a living. So if you could tap into people that can hang wallpaper, but they just want to do it part time, it's a great concept because I'm seeing there's a high need right now for just handyman type of services. Uh, one thing has happened in recent generations, a lot of people didn't grow up with a father or a sibling or somebody who taught them how to do things. So basic tasks around a house, like putting a doorknob on, is a big deal for some people. And if you could capture that, just those menial tasks like that, which isn't designed, but it adds up to design when you put it on the other. And I just, and you know, not to keep belaboring it, but a great point that you made is trusting 
those those contractors and and because they're getting repeat business from you people they'll show up yep. and that's a huge thing because a lot of people hire contractors that they can't get to come back right. definitely thank you for bringing those points up